of really tiny tomato potatoes. Potatoes. Hey guys, how are we going? It's me, Blue, or Pam, or whoever you want to call me. I don't mind. You know, as long as you're here and you're enjoying yourself, that's all that matters to me, right? Well, today, it's another one of those days that's going to be really, really hot. However, I'm going to get organised this morning and I'm going to make us get the cooking done early so that we've got food in the house to eat that we can just grab and go for the next three days. So, I'm going to be making my take, a plant-based take, on an Italian um, zucchini and mint stew, right? Okay, I'm going to be using all these wonderful courgettes and squashes that I've picked from the garden over the last few days. I'm also going to be using some of our baby potatoes that we harvested a little while ago. Um, and I'm also going to be using fresh herbs from the garden. We've got sage, I've got thyme, I've got oregano. Yes, I'm using the flowers. And I've got some bay. We've also got some tin tomatoes because our tomatoes are about two months off yet. Um, and instead of mince, which if, if you want to make a meaty version of this, go you your head, mate. Just chuck in your mince. Don't care. What I'm using is TVP, which is textured vegetable protein. Okay. Um, so we're going to start from scratch and we're going to go and have some fun. <laughs> Let's get stuck in. Okay, to start off with, I'm going to make some veggie stock. I'm just using a vegetable bouillon stock mix. And we're going to make a good pint, maybe almost a litre. Probably a litre, actually, looking at that. Because any time that you're using TBP, you need to rehydrate it. Also going to put two cups of this in here. Ooh, why are you fizzing? No need to fizz. So this is two cups. It's a big mug. Alrighty, there we go. We just tip that in there like it's couscous, you know. Treat it like it's couscous. Now that will take up that stock. Perfect. Now, let's go and put this somewhere out of the way. And we're going to set that to the side. Right. Now I'm going to use two onions because I can and I like onion. And I want this to go a decent distance. Alright, so I'm just going to dice those very, very quickly. Okay. So we're going to get these nicely diced. Now I'm doing mine in slow cooker today. It'll take less time. And I don't have to watch it while it cooks. Which is a bonus. Doesn't need stirring. Just walk away. So I'm going to get that turned on in a second. What are you doing? Silly thing. So yeah, we're going to turn this on and we're going to start by using a little bit of olive oil margarine because I don't have any olive oil. So we're just going to use a little bit of that in there because we're going to get this going as fast as possible. We don't want to have anything going for too long that's going to heat the place up. So the quicker we can just prep and go better it's going to be. Now the reason I'm doing mine in a slow cooker is Tanny, is Tanny has asked for his spag bowl so I'm going to make that on the stove top because it takes 10 minutes okay 20 minutes <laughs> but his is a lot of um, basically jar sauce done but 
going to take a bit longer than his. Plus we've got to do the pasta. I can't really have three milli massive pots on the stove. So I'm going to get this all diced up. Yeah. going to go straight in the slow cooker to brown off. Now what we're going to put in there with this is I'm going to put that in whole as it is and that in whole and these in whole and those in whole and I'm going to do all of that because they're going to be easier to take out afterwards. So in they go. I'm also going to and you won't see me do this very often. But I'm going to put that in there. Now, Tani, he has an intolerance to garlic. It does affect him. So that's why the door to the main part of the house is shut. And the back door is open. And I can put this in here knowing that he won't be affected. But he's not going to eat this anyway. I am. But they're in there as well so that I can just pull it out afterwards if that's what I want to do. So that's done. Next... We're going to add our potatoes. Ooh, some of those have basically had it already. Oop, what are you doing? Probably because our porch right now is not the best place to keep things like this. In the winter it's great because it's in the minuses, but Right now it's very warm. So I'm going to take, most of those are washed and it's not a problem. I'm just going to tip those straight into there. Okay. So that's probably about five hundred grams of really tiny tomato, potatoes. Potatoes! Right, the next thing we're gonna add is our squashes. Tiny bits off the ends. We don't wanna waste what has taken a lot of love to grow. And these have taken a lot of love to grow, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure about this one. Looks like it may be on the way out. Eh. Nah, it's fine. Don't let the outsides fool you, kids. Right. We're going to use our beautiful little grisettes in here as well. Oop. Yeah. Go. Alright. Now we want these to be a good half coin chunky bite sized kind of size so we're just going to cut them down the middle like so and just give them a good chunk sort of like half a centimeter so a quarter of an inch if you work in inches you don't want them to be much smaller than the potatoes because they're going to take about the same time to cook. Right. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, the smell of that already is insane. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to have to chuck all these in in a minute because there's no room left on the board. Okay. Oops. And they're straight in there. 
couple of those potatoes are actually a bit big, so I'm going to just very quickly fish them out and chop them into quarters. So if you've got really, really tiny potatoes like this that you've come up from your harvest, this is a perfect recipe for them. Okay, you get to use them, you don't have to do anything with them, you don't have to peel them, none of that, just chuck them in. Don't waste your babies, seriously. They're awesome. Right, with the grisettes, I'm going to quarter those and cut them around about the same sort of size. Oh, that way. Okay. There we go. And we're going to saute, saute, saute all of that off just now, really, really quickly. Just come down here with me. Okay. So yeah, we're just going to saute all these off. Give them a good start. Nice little boosty. Yum, yum, yums. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our TVP and broth. Here we go. Now, as you can see, that has taken up a lot of that liquid. And as I said earlier, if you want to use meat, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. You've got to eat it. Not me. If you want to go really traditional and you want to be really pedantic about it, it's lamb. Right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in these tins, two tins of chopped tomatoes. Okay, so that's going in there like that. And this one's going in here like that. Simple. Stir that around. Oh, it's going to be amazing guys, seriously. The smell's coming off it already. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum. Right. And that, my friends, I'm actually going to add a little bit more water to that. Um, because it's already looking quite thick and it is a stew, not a sauce. Okay? So there we go. Here we are. Oh. oh my god, I can't wait. Now that's going to take around, around, hour and a half. Hour and a half. Okay. Right. So we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so for the last 10 minutes of this, see, the potatoes are pretty much cooked, which means the rest of it's pretty much cooked. But I want to cook off a little bit of that liquid. It, it's a little bit much for me. I'm going to wrap it up a bit to high, let it bubble off a bit with the lid off, and um, come back when it's done a bit of that. It, it won't stick. There's no way you're going to cook off all of that in the next 10 minutes but it'll condense it down a little bit, which is all I want it to do. Yes. Fabulous. This has now been simmering up here for mm, probably five minutes. I'm gonna get some spirals. Not a lot, just a few. Oh no, not spirals, can okay, I? No. Chuck that in there like that. Now, I don't have to. I could have just served that with some bread or something, but you know what? It's just easier for me this way. If you want to just not do that, that's entirely your choice. But for me, that's going to make it easier. I just have to come out here and serve a bowl up. Now I'm going to get rid of these because they're not necessary anymore. Grab that out. We've got bay. I just want to make sure all the stems are out. So we've got that's 
small bay, that's that. Some sage. Yeah. Not that I'm really that worried, I'm not. It's just that, you know. Ow. It is what it is. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of those papery bits of the garlic. Should be another papery bit of the garlic in here somewhere. Unless it's completely gotten rid of itself. <laughs> you don't know where it's gone. I think it's just done its thing. And um, dissolved. I think it's dissolved, guys. Okay. Right. We'll give that eight minutes to cook up the pasta. And then that's me sorted for the week. Ta-da! Here we go, guys. It's all done. Look at that. That looks amazing. Uh-uh-uh. Okay, so I'm going to be making spag bol for Tani. Um, Tani is a very simple person to cook for. He, he's very, I say it's, I say simple, but he has a lot of likes and dislikes due to the way he was brought up. Um, and you know, we try and get him to try new things. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. But if I can get veg into him any way possible, this will be it. So the veg we're using for him today is onions and mushrooms. And we've got some tinned tomatoes and some jar sauce. I know I shouldn't be using jar sauce, but you know what? We haven't got any tomatoes yet this year, so... <laughs> um, to use what I know that he's going to like and that way I know he's going to eat it and have a decent meal. Right, so we've got one onion that goes straight in. Okay. And I'm going to chuck his mushies in. So we're going to saute those off first. Oof. That's about half a punnet of mushrooms in there for him. Okay. And then we're going to get the mince. Now I'm not putting garlic in this because he does have an intolerance to garlic. Um, there is garlic in the sauce, or a little bit of garlic in the sauce. So that's enough. All right, so I'm just gonna get the beef, chuck it straight in here with everything else because we want that to have some flavor as it cooks. Flavor is everything. All right, there we go. Now I'm not gonna put too much salt in this because, because we're using tinned ingredients, we don't need to add too much salt because it's already gonna be very heavily salted. Um, but I might add some pepper. We'll see how we go. Let's turn that up a bit now. Um, yeah, add a little bit of pepper. That's all good. I mean, this is a really good recipe if you're short on ingredients anyway, or you know, you only have bits and pieces around the kitchen. You don't just have to chuck in the sauce from the jar or your own sauce mix. You can bulk it out with things. It doesn't have to be just this and that. Now, if you wanted to make this veggie, you can get all sorts of um, 
veggie based minces now. Um, my preference is TVP because it's dry and it'll keep on the, on the cupboard um, a lot longer. I don't have to take up fridge or freezer space with it. Okay, so the reason that I stopped the video there is because I can't open this jar. Now I've just taken it to Sunny, he can't open it either. So we're going to have to do it the fun way. So let me turn off this for a second. Um, I need my spoon. Now, you don't have to pierce the lids. I don't like piercing the lids because I reuse the jars. And this is a really good sized jar for reusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a spoon and we're going to start making divity um, little marks around the seal. There we go. Now that can be sealed again. It can. All right, so don't think it can't be, because it can be. Now, we go, we've got our mince browned off. Everything is cooking quite nicely in there. And the first thing we're gonna do is add the jar sauce. Do, 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 done. Then I'm gonna add the tomatoes into that with some water. I'm gonna fill the jar up with water. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on, I'm gonna give it a shake, and then we're gonna tip it all out, and we haven't wasted any. Marvelous. Right, that then is pretty much done, except for one thing. Now this is a very controversial thing and some people say don't do it and some people say do it and all of that kind of stuff but I am going to put a tiny teaspoon of sugar in here. Now I'm doing this for one reason and one reason only. We've just used tin tomatoes. Tin tomatoes have a very metallic flavour to them and they're also quite bitter. They have a nasty little bitter aftertaste. That sugar takes all that away does not add sweetness to this at all in any way shape or form it just stops us from having that not so nice taste from the tin tomatoes if you're using your own frozen tomatoes or your own canned tomatoes or however you do your own tomatoes you won't need to do this okay it's only because the shop bought cheap tin ones right that's done all we need now is the pasta to be done and I've got another hour to wait on mine and dinner is ready for the next three days. Okay, water is boiling. Now I don't put oil in my water, there is no need for it. The only thing that I ever add to pasta water is salt and that's to raise the temperature of the boiling of the water so that the pasta cooks properly and it's less likely to stick if you do that. So that's what I do. Okay. And that's all we ever used to do when I was working at a place called Tossolini's, which is a Italian restaurant or chain of restaurants in, in Canberra. Okay. So yeah, here we go. All in. Right. I'm gonna go and I've finished my brew. Okay. So straight in with this bag. Because this is the way to do it. It's not pasta and then a little bit of sauce on top. You need to get it in there and you need to stir it around and you need to coat it. Okay, because this is the proper way. This is why it doesn't stick together. You don't need oil on your pasta. So you properly have it all mixed in. Okay. Um, now that's tanny sorted for a week. Right, 
it's a little early for dinner for me and so I'm just gonna have a taste now and see how we go. I wanna get one of those croissants. Oh God, get off of my fork. Get off my fork. Mm. Oh my God. Seriously guys. before you say anything about double dipping. I'm the only person who will eat out of this pot. I'm not making you eat it. Mm. That is amazing. <sighs> it's also molten lava. You gotta try this guys, it's really really simple. Everyone's got squashes coming up, zucchinis coming up, courgettes, whatever you want to call them. You all got your potato harvest. <sighs> Get them in the pot. It's amazing. Trust me, you'll thank me for this one. Love you guys heaps, take it really really easy and make sure you blow on it before you put it in your mouth. My mouth is not burning. <laughs> Love you guys heaps. Blessings. <laughs>